Well, hello and welcome to another broadcast of Deep Cough and a Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and I'm excited today. I've been doing life coaching all day, and we've, we've gone through so many people, from people that live in Canada to Spain. It's been powerful. We've had great stories of people that came out of the life coaching saying, wow, I mean, he just, God really answered my prayers. He read my mail, and, he, and, and you know, Brother Jeremy gave me some great advice on how to deal with situations. And so, you know, it always makes you feel good. So I'm doing the broadcast Toward the end of the day, for this reason, because today has been a day of victory and it's been a day of manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God being displayed to His people through life coaching and prophetic words. Amen. So here's what I want to talk to you about today: is I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of visualization. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because I love dealing with the aspect of hearing and seeing because of the fact that this these are great keys and elements that you possess. Anything in your life that you possess that God has given you. And it happens to be the trait that is in every single uh, person on planet Earth, that tells me something is powerful about it. That tells me that if you have senses, if you're able to see and to hear, then guess what? And yet every person on planet Earth, unless something happens to them, has that same power of the same uh, potential that you have to see and hear. That tells me that God is in that thing. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of sight and visualization because it's very powerful to understand the concept that all through the Bible, we we see the word behold. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You know, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. So the power of to behold means, and this is what it means in the Greek, it means what? To look, to view, and to see. Now I've spoken about this before in the broadcast, but it's empo- powerful and it's imperative that you hear what I'm saying today because this is what God put in my spirit to talk about. Because I just came out of a session previously today where it talked about, and I shared this with this person, where I talked talked about the power for her to be able to see past her own perception. You need to learn to see past your own perception, which means God wants to broaden your perception. Because how many know you, what, you're, what you perceive is basically your own definition of what you have uh, defined of your environment? You know, your perception is, I don't like living here. Why don't you like living here? Somebody else could live here. All of a sudden they could say, man, I love living here. This is awesome. It's like, for example, somebody goes into a city and they say, man, I just cannot stand Chicago. I cannot stand Manhattan. I can't stand Birmingham, Alabama. I just can't stand living there. I don't like it. It's dry. It's it's a desert. Or it's too populated. Or it's, it's, it's too much of this or less of this. And yet somebody else can move in to either one, either one of those cities and say, God's hand is here. The anointing of God is here. I love it. It's producing. It's you know wet with the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. i got a great job here. And see, so your perception is totally different than those people around you. But guess what? You have the same thing they have, which is the power to see and to visualize. So because of that, our perception can be deceiving at times, and our perception can lie to us, and our perception can be truthful with us. Because your perception is going to come out of what you're wanting to to say, and how you're really feeling, and what your heart has made its mind up to do. And when I say your heart has made its mind up, remember, remember I talk about the scripture all the time, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your heart's the one that thinks not your brain. Your heart's the one that thinks. So because of that, we realize that, in fact, scientists even say that the entire body organs and all actually goes along with your thinking process. Did you know that? It's a, it's a known fact that you think with your entire beingness. So if that's the case, that everything in you, from your blood to your cell to everything that is alive, actually is part of your thinking process. Now that's powerful. That tells me that I am a brain. That tells me I am a mind. That tells me that when I come into agreement with every aspect of my beingness, from my mind to my organs to my hands to everything in my body once it comes into a full alignment, that means I have made up my mind on a situation or subject of the matter. So therefore, my visual or what I, how I see that is going to be based on my perception of what my entire beingness has come into full agreement on. And because my entire body and, my, and, and everything that I am has made a, an agreement, an alignment, as it were, has come into my, my life, then guess what? That means for me, it's a settlement. For me, it's a done deal. For 
me it's a foundation. It's like the woman at the well that Jesus was talking to. You know, he convinced her. He told her, look, you can do all this, these things if you want to. You can drink from this well, but you're going to thirst again. But I can give you living water that will cause you to never thirst again. So because of that, her, guess what? Everything in her life began to realign to what she just saw and what she just heard. So there was a brand new agreement, a brand new alignment that her entire body began to come into play with. It's like we talked about the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she had to say within herself, if I just make this declaration and say, if I reach up and touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. So everything in her being, her mind of her life, her mind of her body, began to come into alignment to say, I know once my hand touches him. Now check this out. The the, the, uh, the whole body had to come into full agreement and alignment to say that I know if I touch him. Why did she bring the power of touch into it? Because she saw the man that stood before her. That was her visual. Her perception was of, of what she's heard. And so she changed her definition to know that if I reach up, if I touch him, not if necessarily if I just believe it, but if I touch him, that with the thoughts or the mind of my hand, once it touches him, are you with me? Once my beingness, once my hand that's come into alignment with my brain and every other part of me that thinks that once I touch him with my mind of my hand, all of a sudden that anointing, that presence, that powerful, that tangible uh, uh, air that he carries is going to go through my, my mind of my hand, going through the power of my touch and everything, now check this out, everything that I'm thinking in my body will begin to realign to say, wow, I'm shifting from uh, into that place of believing and agreeing that I'm going to be healed and so all of a sudden the mind of the body begins to automatically come into that alignment because it already made that agreement to say I'm going to be healed once I touch him. Once the mind of my hand touches him, I'm going to, it's, I'm going to be healed. And so could you imagine your entire beingness, your entire body automatically says it's working, it's working. You know, I knew if I touched him, you know, with, with the power of my hand, it's going, to, it's going to work. And everything began to what? Come into agreement with the agreement in her, that when in her life she came into already a full agreement to say, guess what? I'm going to be healed once I touch him. And so the entire body that thinks came into full alignment to say, all i got to do is touch him. And my thinking of my entire being of what it came into come into agreement on, guess what? It's automatically going to be touched and healed. And so the power of touch came through the power of agreement in her to everything in her body began to come into full alignment and agreement. So guess what? She knew that the power of visualization that once I see him, my perception of what I used to what it used to be had already are, are automatically and radically changed because automatically I changed my perception to say, look, I heard this man of Galilee, I heard he heals, I heard this, I heard that. And so she convinced herself and her perception began to change to say, I'm never going to be healed. I went to doctor to doctor. The Bible even says she spent a lot of money on doctors so she could imagine her doctor bills. And so her perception changed. So I tell people all the time that you cannot go by what you're perceiving to be factual. You can't go and say, well, I'm discerning this and this and this. Hold on a minute. Are you discerning it or is it out of your perception of what you have perceived to be true? Because i got news for you. Many people in the church and the prophetic move especially who say, I have discernment, I walk away saying, no, you don't. Because bottom line is you perceive and you're perception is getting is getting knocked out of kilter, so to say, and it's knocking your discernment, your true discernment, out of alignment. And so today, when people say I have discernment, most of the time I doubt it, because the bottom line is they're going by what they're perceiving and what they see. And so the power of visualization and sight is very important to us. And so today I want you to realize, change your perception. Challenge your perception. What does the Bible say? Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron means you're going to have to challenge that in which you believe in. You're going to have to challenge your perception to say, look, just because I say, well, my perception, how I, how I perceive the situation, how I see the situation, no, it doesn't matter. Challenge that. Challenge that to be bigger. Challenge it to expand out of the borders of your own imagination to know, wait a minute, I don't have to hold all the truth, but I know my perception needs to shift and change and get a better fine tune. You know, I need, and you go to the to the the garage. What? Um, 
you know, for people in mechanics to fine tune your car, to get it back into adjustment and alignment. That's what you have to do to your perception. And so when you think, well, my perception is from the Lord, my perception's real, my perception's true, I'm, I have great discernment. When you think that to me, I'm saying you're already deceived, you're already in deception, because you everybody has to realize that God's word comes through impure vessels. And because of that, we have to have a fine tune alignment constantly within our own perception, with our own visualization of what we're seeing, what we're seeing and what we're hearing and what we believe is not always the factual truths. And so keep yourself humble by realizing I don't have all the answers, but I'm challenging and I'm sharpening, sharpening by the sword of the Lord, challenging my own beliefs, how I perceive things, how I see things, because I want to be able to think through the mind of Christ. Because I know once I made my mind up, let me put it another way, once I made my body up, <laughs> once I made the thinking of my entire beingness to believe something, if I believe it wrong, guess what? Your entire being has deceived itself. Because if you think with your mind, which is your whole body, if you think about it from a scientific point of view, then guess what? All of you is in deception. You just don't say, well, my mind has been deceived by this. No, you've just deceived your organs. You've just deceived your skin. You've just deceived your cells. You have just deceived every part of who you are. So it's vitally important to keep your perception open enough to let it begin to be tweaked and moved and expanded. If your perception is not changing about any and every situation on planet Earth and about the things of the kingdom, if it's not, you should be considered better off to sleep or dead. And what I mean by that is this. If you're not moving by the law of movement, if you're not moving and shifting and breathing and expanding and tweaking, uh, tweaking, tweaking all the time, then guess what? Something's wrong with you. Because you should always evolve into something greater, even through your perception of how you're perceiving things. Everything should evolve into something greater of expansion in your life. So how does that play into the power of, of a thought? the power of visualization. Because your perception is what you see to be to what you think is real. So the power of visualization actually holds everything in your life of what you believe. You know, if I see, for example, if I visualize, you know, um, something scary, let's say if I go to a movie and I see uh, something very scary that scared me, then guess what? I saw it with my sight. So the visual I impregnate my mind with, which basically is my entire being, I impregnate my entire beingness with a thought that scares me of something that might not even be true. You know, because it's a movie, it's sci-fi, it's made up. So what happens is I've convinced. Do you know the word manipulation basically means that you, you convince yourself of something, that, uh, that you alter the state of your thoughts, of your thinking process to be something else? That's what it means to manipulate. If I manipulate you, that means I can, I can maneuver your thinking, I can manipulate, or I can, I can reshift and recalibrate, so to say, your focus and everything about you. That's what manipulation means. Is I can, I'm convincing you that what you believe is not real and to believe what I believe or what I, how I see things that I manipulate you. And, and so it's a place of deception. So that's why I say when you see something scary, when you see something of someone telling you something, when you see this is how God, this is what God loves in a church service. Oh, God spoke to me and told me this is what He, he delights in. This is what God wants from the, from the body of Christ. Be careful when you say phrases like that. You know, be careful when you say God show me exactly what He wants in this hour for the body of Christ. Because instantly you've got to realize you first of all you just spoke from the heart from the heart of God and so why would God show you the fullness the fullness of, of, of everything that he wants and he desires for the body at that moment even as a prophet I always tell people that anytime God shows me something I always tell the people this is what I perceive this is what I feel as if God has spoken to me of what he is looking for today this is one of the billions of trillion things that God is looking for than his people today because because you always need to keep yourself open to realize that God will never show you the fullness, the full complete measure of every little thing. And I've heard people even say to the point of, God is grieving because of what you just did. Well, I want it so bad to sit here and say, you've got to be careful saying stuff like that. Because you're, you're telling somebody how God is feeling. You're telling somebody how, how you, you are convinced God feels this way, or God believes this way, or God sees things this way. It's a very de deadly and dangerous thing to say things like that. So be very careful in the prophetic. We teach this in our, in our school of the prophets. So be very careful when you speak things like that. You can, you can, you can say things to the effect of saying like this, I feel as if 
if God is showing me that he's not really he's feeling or he's or, or, or uh, I perceive that God is saying today that he sort of perceives this about you is not really healthy for you and he's and, and I feel as if God is sort of let down in this type of area but that's what I'm sensing from the Lord uh, you know and so be able to present it a way to where it doesn't make you God's complete quote unquote mouthpiece you know exactly what God does exactly who God is and what you know God would be saying you're not you're not the thing uh, you're right you're not the thing that God's placed in the earth to to usher in the fullness of who God is so be very careful you give accountability to everything you say and do I don't even know why I wouldn't let rabbit trail but I feel as if it's some it's for somebody right now listening to me on this broadcast to be careful saying things like that now then the power of visualization does this. It means out of perception, how you see things, how you view things, that that's your visual. And so your entire beingness has can, is now believing what you just visualized. So the power of visualization means that you've got to be careful what you see. Because when you begin to visualize something in your spirit, what God does, what the Holy Spirit does, is He pulls from different things within your subconscious mind. You know, the Bible says, I make all things things new. Now this is where most people in the church miss it as well. I make all things new. So if there's nothing new under the sun, which means, guess what? God has got billions of things we've never seen before. But to God, it's not new because He created it all. And so in reality, your spirit man knows that there's nothing new under the sun. Your spirit man, when he sees something quote-unquote new enter the atmosphere of our time frame, it knows, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. I understand that. I've seen that before because I'm spirit. I'm spirit. I'm connected to spirit. Spirit connects to spirit, so it knows all this stuff. But your flesh and your soul says, wow, God just delivered to me a new thing. Thing. And so what God does is, because of that, God takes from your subconscious mind, God pulls from the Spirit, bits and pieces of what you know, and He begins to formulate that and when inside of you. So when you get the visual of what you know God has called you to do and be in your life, maybe to say your future, God's using things that He has shown you, and you pull from those things of your subconscious mind, you pull from Spirit, you pull from the things that you have seen or witnessed or know, since so there's nothing new or the Son, and He makes those things new to you, or He makes all things new. So He shows you things through the power to visualize of what you're looking for in your life, and He gives you bits and pieces of, of remembrances from prophetic words. Now you might say, what does it mean he, may, he brings things of remembrance through prophetic words? Here's what I'm saying to you. We've got to remember, the Holy Spirit's job is to bring all things back to your remembrance. Are you with me? So he pulls things from the remembrance of things you forgot. And he pulls it into your memory bank and begins to project and, and begins to show you this great visualization that you say, I see a hope and a bright future. In other words, I see a visual of what I'm called to do in my life. I got this great thing that I'm sensing and that I'm seeing. So I'm moving into this today because this is what God has shown me through all the things he's, 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 he's shown me that to me it's new, but really in reality it's not, it's, it's not really new in the spirit, but it's new to me because he makes all things that already exist new. That's what the Bible says. He makes all things new. So, you pull into visualization these type of things. And when you see these type of things, this visual, this visual uh, make sure you don't define them by your perception. Make sure you don't automatically say, well, I'm perceiving how this is how it's going to turn out to look like. This is what it's going to turn out to be. You know, I always tell people, when it deals with your future, even from the School of the Prophets course I teach people, which, by the way, many of you need to order the School of the Prophets course 101. It shows you so much revelation on, on these things about what I'm talking about. and uh, But we're pulling today from basically the school of thought, visualization, and imagination. So when you do these things and the Holy Spirit speaks things to you and you be automatically begin to form this visual in your spirit to say, oh man, this is what I see through this visual of what God spoke to me through this prophetic word. Or this is what God showed me in my prayer closet. So I'm getting a visual. I'm getting a picture. Because without a vision or visual, the people perish. That's what the Bible says. So therefore I'm pulling this great visual. I'm pulling this great picture uh, of this of this vision that I've got in my spirit of what God's called me to do and be in my life. Now because of that, what do we do? We've got to make sure your perception of how you perceive things to be does not define it for you. You definitely want to make sure you never say, Ah, oh, praise God, I've seen it clear, uh, so I know what this is, I know what that is, I know what this is. Because what happened is, you automatically define them through how you perceive things, and automatically you lock it into something, and therefore you're expecting God to move out of the visual that He has shown you out of how, out of what you believe and how you, how you see things and how you define things. And guess what? 
for it. Then for you, there's nothing brand new. There's no fresh revelation coming in your future because of the fact you, out of your human nature, of your perception, not realizing it subconsciously, you've already programmed what it's going to look like for you. You've already defined what it's going to look like. You've got to be very careful about that. You've got to make sure when you see the visualization of what you, of, of what you know God has spoken to you through prophetic words, what He's spoken to you out of your life, and everything else, you say, you know, you come to the place where you say, yes, praise God, Lord. You're going to continue to show me fresh revelation. Bypass, Father, what I do, how I just see things and define things. Bypass God. You know, how I have thrown things and calculated things and, and, and sort of refurbished, you know, from the unlimited things, how I, I refurbished those things into my limited puny brain of now how I define it. Get rid of all that stuff, God, and show me fresh things because I don't want to box in the, the, the power of what I'm sensing and what I'm seeing from you through my own definitions that I that I have I've brought into my own life. I don't want to do that, God. So what you do is you keep it there. You just you don't define it, you just keep it existing. And you continuously look at it and you feed into uh, the visual of God's given you. You feed into it by just empowering it to just focus on it. Just look at it. What happens if you get a, a Van Gogh? If you get uh, you know the Michelangelo, if you get whatever all these famous artists have done or or molded out of clay or molded out of rock or or, or created a masterpiece on a tapestry or or beautiful or, or this beautiful painting. What do you do to all these things? A lot of times if you're like me, because I love art, what do you do you go to all these things sculptures and paintings and you just you just like ah oh, you just stand in awe about it because it's beautiful it's beautiful it's a masterpiece and you try to to pull in all the little detailed things they do man i didn't recognize this about this you know to this very day you can look at the mona lisa and all of a sudden it's like I never saw this before. And you've probably looked at it a thousand and one times before. But you always will see something new from the power of creativity within the artist's mind. Because that artist's mind has trained themselves to move out of a limited mind into this unlimited realm of imagination and creativity. And so therefore you always pull something new every single time you look at it. And because of that, what do you do? You've got to be the same Michelangelo. You've got to be able to break the the bands, break the borders, break the bonds of the imagination and say release my definitions God to be whatever you want it to be and then you begin to look through that visual of what you're sensing in your in your spirit of what will happen and what will become in your life and what do you do then you begin to say I'm just going to let it be I'm going to let it be there in my spirit and I'm going to give it attention I'm going to begin to feed into it by just staring at it and being in awe of what I'm sensing and seeing so far and then God will begin to feed more into that and he'll begin to show you more that is to come for you and to see it, but you don't want to automatically look at it and say, I gotta figure it out now. I gotta define it now. I gotta know what it means now. Because all of a sudden, out of your perception, guess what? Definitions come, definitions come of what you feel that's gonna be. That's why when you that's why people that have dreams, if they go to a dream interpreter and I'm all for that completely. I mean, I have some of the closest friends from James Gall to Barbie Breathitt to so many people who um, write these amazing descriptions of these great spiritual, uh, you know, um, things about words and how, you know, a cat represents this and the blood represents this and these colors represent that. And that's powerful. But you also have to remember, you've got to give it a little leeway. You've got to let God interpret it for you. And I'll give you a great example. Um, you know, if I was to say to you, a rose, instantly, what would you do? You picture a, 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 in your spirit a rose. A rose is red. It's got thorns, you know, uh, down the ends of it, and and you picture a rose. But what if I prophesy that to somebody and says the Lord says um, the rose has passed away, and God's going to bring to you, um, you know, comfort and joy or whatever. Or, or or if you say something to that degree of a rose, guess what? I've done that before, and guess what? Rose happens to be someone's mother's name. A rose was a sister who was killed in a car wreck. I see you don't know so don't ever try to define because even if you look at a manual and say a rose represents this and that it doesn't always represent the same thing to everybody and so make sure your perception of what you have defined of how you perceive things doesn't say oh instantly I know the definition of what that means because you don't to somebody else it can mean something totally different and you don't want to steal their quote unquote thunder you don't want to steal the revelation of something that could bring healing to their life 
And if you try to define it out of your own perception of what they're visualizing, you could ruin the masterpiece that could be, that could be potent and powerful to them to bring healing or to bring power to their lives for something totally different. So make sure today, get a visual of what you know in your spirit God has given you. Feed that visual with attention. Give it what I call energy. Once again, we're not being new age. Energy is energia from the Greek, just for those who are religious nuts. We want to make sure that you're those those devils of religiosity is not getting to you, that we're moving in freedom and liberty to know God created everything. And energy, guess what? Would not turn on a lamp if we if, if we didn't have it. And energy is not is not a religion. Religion doesn't turn on your lamp. It's just there for us for as a resource. So feed your attention, feed your energy in into what God is showing you in your spirit. And as you begin to do that, guess what happens? You begin to say, I'm going to let it be. I'm going to continuously focus on it. Give it attention. And every time you do, you'll see another beautiful piece that you never saw before of God's creativity flowing through that. And God will begin to define that to you of what that definition definition needs to be to you and for you to where it can flow through you and as you. The vision's going to be who you are one day. You want it to flow through you as you. And that's what, that's the ultimate goal of God. Is you see it, you believe it, you become it, and then guess what? Then it flows out of you. You're, what, what is in you, a part of you, will always flow out of you. It did Jesus. Jesus was the virtue to the woman with the issue of blood. So virtue flowed out of him. So a part of him flowed out of himself to her. That's what happens with vision. When you begin to get a visual of a vision of what God's shown you and you let him define it for you, then once you become it, it becomes your experience, it's going to flow right out of you. And as it flows out of you, a part of you has flown out from you to something else or to someone else. And guess what happens? You begin to be expanded because the Christ in you begins to flow out. And guess what? The expansion of who you are, which is the Christ in you, because you've decreased and He's increased, flows into the uttermost parts of the world. Isn't that beautiful? That's the story of your life. So here's what I want you to do today. And I know you're listening to this broadcast and you're saying, man, I want to know more about this. Please, do me a favor. And I'm talking by the Spirit of God to some of you, because God just spoke to me just now and says, I'm talking, not you. This is Spirit flowing. And I thought, wow. I want you today to begin to go to our website, identitynetwork.net. That's identitynetwork.net. Or .com, either one. We own both of them. Go to it. On the far right-hand corner or side of column, you will see uh, a graphic that talks about the school of thought, visualization, or an imagination. Or go to the button that says Courses and Programs, and you can find it. But I want you to order the course today. I deliberately made this course of school of thought, visualization, and imagination. I deliberately made it under well under $100 and because I wanted to get it in your hands because it will change your life. We get testimonies every single day of people who say it totally revolutionized my life. I never ever thought about how I see, how I think. You know, it deals with thoughts. You taught me how to create again. You taught me how to bring a masterpiece of, of my imagination to life again. I'm telling you, you won't find these things in many other Christian circles, but God spoke to me through His through His written word of stories that back this up. And I want to get it in your hands today. And I think it comes with 13 CDs. It comes with a DVD. It comes with my brand new book called The Power of Thought and Imagination. And I want to get it in your hands today. All of these things. Uh, you know, uh, so I want to send the course out to you today. So go to identitynetwork.net. You'll see the graphic on the right hand side or look under courses and programs. Order the School of Thought, Visualization, and Imagination today so we can ship it out to you. If not, call my office right now and say, I listened to Brother Jeremy's broadcast and I want to order the School of Thought, Visualization and Imagination. And if you call my office today, and once again the price is well under $100 and that's it's a special offer we're giving. If you call today or order at the website today or this week and you tell us, listen to me now, and you tell us, I heard the broadcast, send me my free CD along with my purchase of the School of Thought. I Then we'll send you a, um, a brand new teaching CD I've done recently on the power of the mind, which is a great seller, brand new, and it's already sold a lot. 
$10 value free of charge on top of your school of, of the thought. If you do that, you have to let us know. If not, you will not get it at the time of purchase. And then we'll send you the free CD along with the, with the course as well. So, order the course today and through online or on the phone and we can ship it out to you today. Amen? So, God bless you guys and thank you again for being a part of our broadcast. And let me share this with you as well. Don't forget, if you don't have the app to Deep Cough in a Deep, then call us. We can set it up for you, an app on your iPhone, or you can actually go to, if you have an Android, you can go to the Google Play and you'll find Deep Cough in a Deep. You will actually find the app for your Android there. You can upload it and every day you can listen to our broadcast. We have a brand new broadcast every day or every other day. Um, and It all depends on if I'm out of town or not. And you can listen to it. If you want one for the iPhone, we have that as well. We can send you the link and within two seconds you You've got the the app on your iPhone as well. God bless you guys. I look forward to talking to you again soon and uh, seeing what God's going to say to you. God bless.